Thank you for subscribing to the Extra Mile Podcast. Help us out by leaving a review and a five-star rating wherever you download the show. After leaving a review, slide on into our DMs over on social media at Mississippi DOT and let us know. As a thank you, we have compiled a Google Map list of all of our guests' favorite spots to eat on Mississippi highways. It is our gift to you. Seriously, you guys are the best. We could not do the show without you, and we greatly appreciate the support. Remember, drive smart out there on Mississippi highways. That's nearly $2 billion, and that's money that's going to be spent on improving safety, enhancing mobility, and improving economic growth and development in the state of Mississippi. Yeah, and with this historic funding from the legislature, new construction will be popping up all over Mississippi. MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast. Men and women of the Department of Transportation are up to the task and up to make sure that we deliver a product that the taxpayers uh, can be proud of, so I'm ready for us to go to work. Welcome in to the latest episode of the Extra Mile Podcast Legislative Session presented by the Mississippi Department of Transportation. I'm MDOT Deputy Director of Public Affairs, Paul Catool. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Will Kraft, who is the Division Director here in Public Affairs. And Will, it's uh, kind of crazy. We've been doing these legislative episodes for three years now. Wow. Uh, time flies uh, for truly, truly. And no better way to kick off the third uh, year of us doing this than having MDOT Executive Director Brad White in the house. Brad, uh, thank you for joining us. And I thank trust you that, absolutely trust that you got a little bit of a break during the holidays before we get into this <laughs> Somewhat, uh, four-month yeah. period. Yeah. You, uh, get some rest? I did. I mainly stayed around the house, went to the gym a few times, but... There you it, go. Was, it was nice. Very nice. Excellent. Well, uh, kicking things off, you know, as we get get the year going here, got a whole bunch of good stuff, got the session going. But first and foremost, we got the commissioners in place. You know, we got our oaths of office behind us. Swear again ceremony was just last week, right? Right. Tuesday. So we got a, got them uh, sworn in. Everybody newly or duly elected. And got Commissioner Busby joining up, uh, joining the team. So he's got him in place. And then uh, chairmanship. We have a, uh, selected the chairman, correct? They elected Willie Simmons chairman, correct. So Commissioner Busby, obviously new to the commission, but not new to MDOT. He's been the House uh, Chairman of Transportation for the last, I think, eight, maybe 12 years. I know eight years. Uh, So he's been a great partner of our agencies for some time, very familiar with the agency, how our funding works, and uh, can hit the ground running, understanding what MDOT's all about. Uh, So glad that he's here. Of course, Commissioner Caldwell, Commissioner Simmons returned uh, from the election for another four years. And uh, one of the first things the commission does after they're sworn in is they meet to organize and uh, Commissioner Simmons was elected to serve as chairman, which is exciting. Commissioner Simmons, you know, spent you know almost three decades, I guess, in the state senate. He's very familiar with uh, state government. He's been here for four years, always been a great supporter of the staff here and the mission of the department and easy to work with. And so looking forward to, to him uh, presiding over the commission and working with us uh, to advance transportation. It's going to be good stuff. Commissioner Simmons, good man, good fella. He got a lot of positive feedback on social media, a lot of well wishes, so nice to see that. Uh, every January 1st, it seems there's a little bit of uh, turnover and things like that, you know, retirements and that sort of thing. Uh, lots of good people here at the DOT are in new positions, uh, lots of uh, staff changes. You right. want to talk about that? Yeah, uh, real excited about uh, the team that's in place. Earl Glenn, uh, who I'm sure you all have on at some point, mm-hmm. uh, is a new chief engineer. Uh, Earl's no stranger to them, Dot. He's been in the district's uh, offices. He's been in our construction division. He's ran District 3 for some time uh, now and will be moving into the chief's role and already has hit the ground running. Uh, my confidence level it just continues to, to grow in Earl. Every, the more we meet, the more we talk. Uh, he's got some big plans, and uh, I look forward to the accountability and the uh, sense of urgency that, that he brings to the table to get our mission accomplished. Uh, we've also got Trudy Laughlin and Lee Frederick that are both coming in and taking over aspects of the pre-construction leadership position here at the department. Both of them, again, no stranger to MDOT, hard workers, well respected in the industry and I know will do a good job. And uh, Janie Bass was going to be our assistant chief engineer overseeing construction, maintenance, uh, materials, you know, all of those types of uh, uh, field operation aspects of what we do, which is extremely important. 
Uh, she brings a great deal of experience and skill. Uh, I'm real excited about her being in that role. And of course, Jim Willis is going to be moving over and he'll maintain his uh, <clears throat> position that he's had was, as assistant chief engineer overseeing a lot of the operations of the department. But we'll be adding to that all of the multimodal uh, divisions, ports and rail and aeronautics. Uh, public transit uh, will all be come under the intermodal planning uh, and operations for the department. And Jim's a great guy, a great visionary, works well with people. And I think with as the legislature has started investing more into the multi-mode uh, aspect of what we do as a Department of Transportation, remember we're not the old highway department anymore, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think Jim will... Uh, allow us to, to move fast into the future and to kind of remake that aspect of what uh, MDOT does in those those rounds. And so I'm really excited about that. Of course, anytime you have a few moves at the top, it trickles down a domino sure. effect. So we've got a new division heads and uh, I think four different divisions, one new division, three other divisions. We've got two new district engineers in district three and six by virtue of retirements and earls uh, moving. So uh, I feel real good about where we are. I think we've got a good group of people together. And of course, I think the people that make up the teams that all of these individuals lead uh, are good folks, and uh, I'm excited about what the future has for us. Absolutely. Things definitely look good. All those folks, great folks, uh, great friends of public affairs in the podcast. we got to get them all on in one episode or, or two there. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, though, coming coming into the, the session, uh, talking about intermodal stuff, and, and that certainly might be on the table. What else? Uh, you know, I guess, first off, it's a, it's a little different. It's a four-month session this time, right? Yeah, the first session of every term is, gives a little bit of extra time because the first part of the session is all pomp and circumstance with everyone being sworn in, the inauguration of a governor, the reorganization of the Senate and the House, appointment of committees, committee chairman. <clears throat> so they're given a little bit of a extra time to do their work. Oftentimes when you've got the same governor, same lieutenant governor, in times past, same speaker of the session, they have the ability to shorten it if they need to, and they're getting ahead of schedule. And with the, these types of leadership that we have over there, it wouldn't surprise me if that's what they did. Uh, but yeah, it's scheduled to be a 120-day session. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that's quite a that's quite a, a, a gruel. So good mm -hmm. luck to everybody involved for sure. 120 days will be here. You know, comes and goes quicker these days. It seems like, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. So one of the first things I've heard you talk about, kind of your ta main talking point when you know on some of these shows uh, lately, is the recurring uh, revenue for the agency. Yeah. We need some sustainable funding for roads and bridges, Mississippi. You talk more about that and any kind of specific ideas on that? Yeah, I mean, when I first came back to. MD about two and a half years ago, you know, our goal was more money for our, our staff, more money for our projects, <clears throat> and better the relationship with the legislature. And I think that we've accomplished those things. We still have a long way to go in some of them. I mean, our, our, we still hope to continue moving salaries around in the agency uh, into next year. We hope to continue getting money for our projects, and we'll, you know, keeping a good relationship with your state and federal leaders is an ongoing process. But I do think that we've done enough in those areas where it's time to focus on something that's a, a really big ticket item, and that is reoccurring revenue, which is going to take a lot of uh, leadership on the part of those under the Capitol Dome to be willing to step up and say, how are we going to provide for the Department of Transportation's mission in, in providing this core function of government? <clears throat> As you know, for decades, we've primarily been funding by the fuel tax. I think that's an antiquated system. Uh, I think that it, the legislature would be unable to raise the fuel tax enough to properly take care of the needs that we have. So I think in today's economy, we've got to have a new, more fresh approach uh, to developing a model of how our funding is going to come about. And I think it has to be diversified in that it's going to come from different sources instead of just one so that we can deal with the ebbs and flows of the market and what, what happens from that standpoint. We have talked with leadership about things like uh, gaming revenue that comes into the state that currently is unobligated, uh, use tax revenue that comes into the state that is currently unobligated and would traditionally go into the general fund for the legislature to dole out. Last year that generated about $300 million. And I would make the argument that that's money that could be well used here. It could come to the Department of Transportation, help plug the hole in our deficit of our paving and maintenance program, that it could also help us cash flow a capacity program that would allow us to continue building all of the projects that we want to build to benefit the state uh, system, increase efficiency and safety. 
uh, to our system without having to go back to the legislature every year for one-time money. I think it's just a, a more common sense approach to how we would do that. <clears throat> and I'm very glad that you know, most everybody that I've talked with, they, they see the importance of transportation. They see the importance of, of providing for a good infrastructure system. And so I think that we're going to have a meaningful conversation about that. In the past, I think that the transportation industry has made a mistake by jumping up and immediately just suggesting that we should raise taxes in order to, to pay for something. You know, fortunately, most people under the dome doesn't, you know, like the idea of just raising everybody's taxes. Uh, without first studying and making sure that we can live within our own means. And I, I believe that we've given them some options, I guess you would say, that would prove that there is revenue that could come to us that would accomplish what we're wanting to do and what we're required to do in a way that would fit within the current tax structure and not require raising anyone's taxes uh, to do it. So hopefully that'll work out. Well, I certainly uh, have no answers to that. I'm, I'm all in favor of no further raising taxes. Uh, daycare is expensive. Uh, what else we got on tap for the uh, for the session? I know there's plenty that uh, maybe has been tried or looked at before. Anything major or otherwise coming up? Well, you know, we've got a new division, uh, Alternative Delivery Division, that uh, Jessica Dilly was uh, heading up. And so I know that there's some things that we'll be asking the legislature to give us in the way of authorizing language that would give our staff just some additional tools in the toolbox with which to do uh, our job, that would give us more options of how we go about delivering a product to the taxpayer, and hopefully would increase our efficiency, allow us to do it cheaper and quicker and uh, better. <clears throat> so there's things like that that we'll look at. I still want to get through the session without any earmarks in our federal program bill. I still want to get through the session with the authority in place for us to continue moving salaries. So we'll be kind of uh, guard dogging those types of, of items. So there, there are things there, but nothing quite to the match of trying to get us a stream of revenue that we could rely on that would go into the future that our industry and, and our department could, could plan on. And one thing that I failed to mention earlier when I was talking about it, <clears throat> something that's different now than we, when we did this before or when we would go to the legislature for additional money is that we now have accounts set up at the Department of Finance and Administration that are strictly for federal match, strictly for paving and maintenance, and a third one that's strictly for capacity. The importance of that is now the legislature has a vehicle through which they can put money, they can divert money into these accounts in an agency that reports to the governor that only MDOT can tap that money, but the only way we can tap that money is to then draw down for it to go directly to a project. So now there's a system in place that allows the legislature to appropriate money or divert funds and know that 100% of the money goes directly to the road. And in the past, that's not been the case. In the past, some would argue that years past that <clears throat> money would come to MDOT, and some had the opinion that it fell in a hole that didn't always go strictly to the uh, to the projects. And some of the old legislators still remember when the building that we're in was built and Fortunately, none of us are responsible for that, but but they felt like you know we want to be we don't mind giving money to MDOT. We want to be sure it gets to the project, and I think these accounts allow for that and can give them confidence for that, and hopefully uh, remove that as an obstacle in our way of to getting these these funds. So I'm I'm excited about that. That's fantastic. I think the public uh, you know wants to know needs to know the the money coming in. I know we've gotten record fun in the last few years. It's definitely going. Going to our roads and bridges, for sure. The best way can, to get yeah. good things is to deserve good things. And I think that what we've done puts us in a position, thanks to the men and women that make up the department, the decisions we've made here, the manner in which our people do their work, we've deserved uh, the things that we're asking for. And I think that we've proven that we can be trusted with these resources. When we've asked them not to earmark the federal program, you know, we told them, if you just won't earmark that, you'll, you'll give us the flexibility that we can manage the program in a way that will give us the ability to go after additional federal obligation authority. And just in this past year, thanks to Mac and his team and the way our staff has managed that, we were able to ask for an additional $100 million or so in federal obligation authority, uh, which results in more federal funds. And had they earmarked that program, they being the legislature, had that program been earmarked, we wouldn't have had the flexibility to move the money around in order to accomplish that. 
And so they took us at our word two sessions ago, and we proved that we could be trusted with our word, and we proved that we were right with what we told them, that it does result in an increase in funds for the taxpayers of this state. So our staff doing a good job and, and fulfilling what we promised the legislature we would do, we now have the credibility that we can be trusted. And so I, th I think that, that that's uh, something else that I'm, I'm forever in debt to the people that do the work here in a way that, that allows us to be in a position to have credibility when we go across the street. Uh, and a full a full slate of things to work on over there, and uh, we'll certainly be be keeping tabs. And hopefully, we'll be back to a week uh, weekly episode. So we'll be trying to keep keep abreast of all the of the happenings and moving parts and pieces over there. Uh, to move into a little lighter side of things, we're two quick questions for you here as we wrap things up. I'll, I'll take the uh, the second one, Paul. If you want to ask him about his uh, New Year's. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, certainly everybody in public affairs has a New Year's resolution. We want to know the director's uh, New Year's resolution. Well, I, I hope that I can maintain the discipline to continue going to the gym. You know, I've lost about 30 pounds That's in good. the last six nice. months. And uh, I feel good and tried to get, you know, alcohol consumption and other things over a very moderate control. And so my New Year's resolution is to try to stay on track with that and just continue taking better care of myself. I'm not quite as young as I used to be, and so I thought it was time for me to grow up and eat better and act better and, and live better, so I'm a, I hope to stick to that. That's a great one. These are some sure. of the same conversations <clears throat> me and Paul were having earlier today, Literally. you know, but uh, and then the next side of things, we normally ask about music and things, so we, we've had that question and, and talked about that with you before, but uh, musician may be closer to home than what we realized for you, Brad, right? You got a family yeah. member? Megan May has a new album coming out. She is, uh, her father and my mother are first cousins. And while that may seem a long ways off, as you know how Mississippi is, particularly in Simpson County, I mean, we all grew up together and right down the road and we're all very close. But yeah, she's got a new album out. And very. I don't know where she got her talent from. It certainly <laughs> wasn't from my side of the family. Uh, but uh, very, I mean, good with a guitar, great voice, and uh, real excited for her. Yes, absolutely. Coming out, uh, I believe it was like January 8th or 9th uh, at, the, at the Blue Front Cafe. She'll have a, a little debut going on. So lots of fun stuff going out there, but uh, I'll turn it back over to Paul, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. And Will played a little bit, bit of it for me before you got in here. Good yeah. stuff. We love the blues, Mississippi the blues, nothing like that. That's right. So yeah, anyway. Her grandmother and my grandmother were sisters, and both were very good on the piano. Yeah. My grandmother liked to play classical music, and she played the organ and piano at our church for, you know, 60 years. Her older sister, Megan's grandmother, played the organ at their church for many years, but Annie enjoyed playing the boogie-woogie and rock and roll and all of that. Nice. And she liked to make the piano rock, and, and Megan uh, has a lot of Annie's uh, talent and her mood of things. I was going to give well, the, uh, the uh, Bentonia Voodoo Queen, January 28th, so check it out. That is a cool name. Everybody go go get that album for sure. Anyway, uh, Brad, thank you for visiting us to, uh, yeah. with us today. Um, greatly appreciate it. And like Will said, you know, we're going to be keeping everybody up to date on the legislative happenings in 2024. We want to thank all of our listeners, our viewers, for tuning into the Extra Mile Podcast legislative <laughs> session. You can watch and listen to episodes by visiting goem.com forward slash the extra mile. Be sure to follow us on social media at Mississippi DOT is the handle. I want to thank Roy Atkins for filling in for Drew Hall today and making this show go. And remember to drive smart out there on Mississippi highways.